Hey guys and welcome to the exciting world of filmmaking, visual effects and atrocious puns. Now that right there is my very own hit film. <laughs> alright, alright, it's not quite as flashy as the latest version of hit film from FX Home. <laughs> hit film, the software, is a really powerful tool for video editing and for creating cool motion graphics and visual effects. It comes in two distinct flavors, HitFilm Express, which is absolutely free, and HitFilm Pro, which is the souped up paid version of HitFilm. In this video, I want to show you how you can get your hands on HitFilm Express for free and how you can use it to create your own film projects from start to finish. Now, I know this is going to be a long video, so for all of you impatient people, I'm going to drop you some timestamps down below, so go and check them out. You can jump to anywhere that you might find interesting. Also, everything I cover in this video is going to work equally for HitFilm Express and for HitFilm Pro, just that I won't be touching on any of the features that are limited to only the Pro version. If you are keen to see what cool stuff you can do with HitFilm Pro, go and check out the FX Home website and if you do decide to go Pro or upgrade HitFilm Express with a few paid add-on packs, you can use my custom coupon code SURFACEDSTUDIO10 in one word to get 10% off the final price. Now, while I could have just released a quick video to cover the new features in the latest version of HitFilm Express, I decided to create a brand new complete beginner course, mainly because my old one is getting a little bit outdated and I think it's much more useful to have everything together in the one spot. Finally, just to demonstrate the power of HitFilm Express, this entire video, all of the editing, the audio and all of the visual effects were created using HitFilm Express, absolutely free, without any of the add-on packs. But now let's not waffle on for that much longer and jump right into the tutorial. In order to download HitFilm Express for free, simply pop open your favorite web browser and then go to hitfilm.com forward slash express. This is the official website for HitFilm Express. On here you'll find some general information as well as some really cool short films and included tutorials that have been created using HitFilm Express. But in order to download the software, simply come to the very top of the page and then click on this big blue button saying get HitFilm Express free. Now you will be asked to simply share the love about HitFilm Express and I recommend just give them a shout down on Twitter, Facebook, Google Plus if that still exists or any other platform. Simply you know, tell people about it and spread the word. It's a really good program. Once you've done that, you can sign up to create a new account or if you already have an account, you can sign in. But Let's just say we're a brand new user and let's create a new account. Then press the button at the bottom and you will be sent an email that contains all of the details for how to download and activate HitFilm Express. Here we are in Walter's inbox and there's the mail from FX Home. By the way, just give this a little bit. It might take a little bit to come through to your email account and also make sure to check your spam folder because sometimes they can end up in there. Now, this email includes everything you need to know. The most important thing is the actual installer for HitFilm Express. So simply click on the link and this will open up the download page where you can now download HitFilm Express for free either for Windows or for Mac. I'm on a Windows machine, so I'm going to download the Windows installer. And once that's downloaded, let's simply launch it to install HitFilm Express. Cool, everything's installed, so let's launch HitFilm Express. First off, because this is a fresh install, we first need to activate and unlock HitFilm Express. So let's enter our email and the password that we provided when we signed up for a free account. Cool, and that's it. Let's quickly restart HitFilm Express. And we're in business. The first thing that you will see when you launch HitFilm Express is the startup screen. The startup screen is divided into two parts. Over on the right hand side, you will see all of the latest updates and news and tons and tons of tutorials for HitFilm Express. Simply click through these for go to YouTube and check them out, follow along. There's a lot of cool and fun stuff that you can do. Over on the left hand side, you will find your add-on packs. Now, I did already mention that HitFilm Express is the free version of HitFilm. There's a paid version called HitFilm Pro, which does come with a lot of, well, pro features, but you can actually upgrade HitFilm Express with individual add-on packs. So you can kind of pick individual features or effects to add to HitFilm Express for, for example, you want color correction, so you may want to add some scopes and correction and LUTs, or maybe you actually just, you're more looking for lighting effects or retro looks or particle effects are gunfire. So you can add very individual features and 
effect packs to Hitfilm Express. They all cost around the 15 to I believe $50 for something like Mocha Hitfilm, which is a really smart planar tracker. So you can pick and choose and kind of customize it in any way you want. Also, if you do end up deciding to purchase anything from the FX Home store, just remember that you can use my custom coupon code Surfaced Studio 10 in one word to get 10% off the actual price and I'll get a little bit of a kickback as well, which I always appreciate. But now, enough talking, let's get started creating our very first film project in HitFilm Express. For that, come up to the top left and you can either open an existing project of which we have none or you can simply click new to start a new project. The first thing that you will need to define when you're creating a new project are your basic project settings. This includes things like the video resolution, like the width and the height of your frames, which by default I like to leave on 1920 by 1080, which is full HD and most modern cameras shoot in that resolution. Frame rate, I'm going to leave this on 24 frames per second, which is what cinema uses, but you may want to adjust this if you're filming with a different camera with a different frame rate. Personally, 24 frames per second is what I like to choose. The aspect ratio or the pixel aspect ratio, and this might be a bit technical, but not all pixels are square, especially if you're using older cameras, the pixels may not actually be square and you can adjust for that here. By default, again, I'm going to leave this on one. And then the audio sample rate, which determines the quality of your audio. By default, you will find that 48,000 Hertz is more than adequate for most things that you want to create. At the top, you can also define a duration. By default, that's set to five minutes, but let's just drop this down to one, which will be plenty for this tutorial. Also, you can create and just use templates. So at the top, you'll have a drop down for templates. I'm on the 1080p Full HD, 24 frames per second template, but there's templates for all sorts of different formats like Instagram video, GoPro clips, all the way up to 4K Ultra HD, or you can just define your own custom template and then just save it and use it really nice and easily. Also do note that besides the settings for the editor, your base project, you also have a tab for rendering and this is some more advanced settings. I'm not going to cover them in this tutorial. You can just leave all of that on default. Once you're done setting everything up, simply hit OK and let's get started. This is the interface that you will be staring at for the most time that you're using HitFilm. And before I go over what all of these elements are, let's actually import some footage first because I find that once you have footage in your project, it's much easier to show you what all of these different panels actually do. So the first thing you want to find on your interface is the media panel. For me, by default, it's down here in the bottom left, there's a panel called media, and this is where you will import and manage all of the images, videos, audio clips that you want to use to build up your film project. If you can't find this panel, maybe you're using a different version of HitFilm than I am here, simply come up to the main menu and other view, select reset workspace, and it will reset the workspace of HitFilm Express, and you should have a media panel available, because this is where you import all of your footage. Without this, you won't really be able to do anything at all. There are three different ways that you can import footage into HitFilm. Within the media panel, the most obvious one is this import button at the top. So let's click that, and that is going to bring up the import dialog. This is a simple file browser, so you can then navigate your hard drive to find the images or video files or audio clips that you want to use. And you can then select some of them or all of them. I'm just going to select the first three right here, hit open, and HitFilm Express will import them into your project. Within the media panel, HitFilm Express will give you a little preview thumbnail for your clip. And over on the right hand side, you'll see the information for this video. So this one is 1920 by 1080 pixels. It's a frame rate of 23.976 frames per second, 15 seconds long. Then I have this creepy bunny clip here and a door macro shot. And you may notice that as I'm clicking through these, this viewer here at the top, this trimmer updates automatically. Don't worry about that for now. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's instead talk about the two other ways that you can import footage into HitFilm. Instead of using the import button, you can also simply double click onto some empty space within your media panel. And again, that will just bring up the import dialog where you can then select the next few clips that you want to import, hit open, and they'll be imported into your project. The last and in my opinion, easiest way to get footage into HitFilm Express is to simply bring in an explorer or a finder window, select the clips that you want to bring in and just drag and drop them directly into your media panel. Now, one quick point to the type of files that you can import into HitFilm. Obviously, right now, so far, I've only imported videos, but let's bring up a different Explorer window. And in here, I've got some audio files as well as an image. And I can, again, just drag and drop them directly into HitFilm Express and HitFilm Express will import these no problem at all. You'll even see that it displays nice audio wave files for all of the audio files you bring in. 
but do know that HitFilm Express and HitFilm in general don't support everything. You might have some really arcane camera that has some video format that isn't supported. So for example, I've got a Canon MVI12.zorg file here. If I try to drag this into HitFilm Express, this will not import. If you're using the import dialog, you may notice that that file doesn't even show up because it's not a supported media file. Now you can switch this drop down here from all supported files to all files and your file may show up. And if you hit import, it will import the file, but it will actually tell you it's not supported. Now you can easily find out what file types are supported by HitFilm Express by going to fxhome.com forward slash express forward slash specs. And on this page, you will find again, a lot of detailed information about what you can and can't do with HitFilm Express and which parts are part of add-on packs or the pro version of HitFilm. And if you go fairly far down, you'll find a section on file handling and in here details out the exact file types that are supported both for video and for audio. Now, if you do find yourself with video files or audio files that you'd love to use, but HitFilm just won't accept them, I recommend go get yourself a program called Handbrake. You can find that under handbrake.fr. And again, I'm going to drop all of these links down in the video description so you don't have to remember any of them. It's a free video converter. You can drop in any video files and convert them to any other format. So just convert your files to something that HitFilm will accept, and then you can bring them in and use them in your project. Let's get back to HitFilm Express and well, I've just dumped a whole bunch of media in my media folder, but it's getting a little bit clunky here. Over on the top right hand side, you can show it with thumbnails. You can also collapse it to a list view, which might make it a little bit easier to see what is what. And I'm a bit of a neat freak. I like to folderize everything that I'm bringing in. Also, because I know this canon.zorg file that I've imported isn't actually support, so I'm going to select it and press delete on my keyboard to just flush it from my media panel. And let's create a new folder. Let's create one for the audio files. Let's select all of the audio files I have in my project. And I'm holding down control to select a whole bunch of them and just drag and drop them into the audio folder. Let's collapse that folder. Let's create another one for all of the indoor shots. Let's select all of our indoor footage and drag and drop that into the indoor folder. And I've got a few random ones like of this creepy bunny, a vineyard and an image of just some nice blurred out background. For those, I'm going to create an image folder for the image and maybe let's just call a miss miscellaneous folder for the vineyard and the creepy bunny. By the way, if you're wondering where this is, this is the Jackalope Hotel down in Victoria here in Australia. By the way, I highly recommend that you do follow along with this tutorial using your own footage. You'll just have much more fun and you'll probably get something a little bit more personal out at the end. However, I will provide all of these clips as downloads. If you want to follow along using these clips, you can just go to my website surfacedstudio.com forward slash downloads and you'll be able to download these clips and just follow along. But again, just use your own footage if you can. I reckon you'll just have much more fun. Now that we've imported all of our footage into HitFilm Express, let's start editing things together. And for that, let's talk about the editor timeline, which is where you will essentially create your edit sequentially left to right to lay out all of the clips that you want to play off in sequence before you export it and share it with your friends, your family or upload it to the internet. Let me change my media panel back over to the thumbnail view so we see what we are working with. Let's just grab one of these indoor walk shots and simply drag and drop it directly onto the editor timeline. You will see there's two green bars displayed, one on video one and one on audio one, meaning this clip that I've brought in has both a video and a audio track. I'm going to drag it to the very left side and you can see it snaps to the beginning of my timeline and let go. And what will happen if this is the very first clip that you're dropping into your editor timeline, Hit from Express will check, do the properties of this clip match my project settings? If not, you will see this pop up. In this pop-up, HitFilm is simply asking you, do you want to match your editor timeline settings to the ones of the clip that you brought in? If you look onto the properties in your media panel on this clip, this is 1920 by 1080, which again is exactly matching our project settings, but this is 23.976 frames per second just because of the camera that I used, but my project is set to 24 frames per second. So HitFilm wants to be helpful. It doesn't really matter whether you hit yes or no. I'm going to go with no just because I like sticking with 24 frames per second. But don't stress if you get this wrong, you can always come back and adjust this at any point in time. And we now have our very first clip on our timeline. And wow, you can see the image everywhere. Over in the top right hand corner within the viewer, you can now get a preview of the video and the viewer will actually just show what is underneath this cursor here, which you can click and drag over. So this is essentially just your timeline indicator of where your current timeline is at. By the way, you can simply press space to start playing back your video and press space again to stop. Within the viewer itself at the bottom, you also have playback controls. You can also just press the playback 
button here and then pause to pause your playback again. And you'll note that the editor and the viewer will stay in sync. So the timeline indicator will move appropriately. But right now it's not really exciting. It's just a single shot. So let's bring in a few other clips. I want to come down a little bit. Maybe I want to have this macro shot, this railing macro shot here. And again, we get to the trimmer in a moment. So just don't worry about that changing for a second. Let's just bring this clip in again. Let's drag and drop it directly into your editor timeline. I'm going to drag it over a little bit on the right hand side. Let's come up. Maybe I want this ceiling detail shot as well. Let's bring that in and drag it here. Come down a little bit and maybe I'll take this other indoor walk shot right here. And now I've got all of my video clips, but you can see there's gaps between them, right? So if I was to export this video, you would literally go from video to black. You can now either click on these clips and drag them over to the left hand side to snap them together. You can also right click any gap on your editor timeline and simply select to ripple delete the gap. It's going to delete the gap and move all of the consecutive clips in. So let's del ripple delete this gap. And let's do it for the other one as well, ripple and if it's getting a little bit too small, you can actually zoom in on your editor timeline. Again, there's multiple ways to do this. You can hold down Control or Command on a Mac and scroll up on your mouse wheel to zoom in a little bit. And then you can select the gap and ripple delete that gap as well. If you don't have a middle mouse wheel, you can also use these controls down here in the bottom left hand side on the editor. This little scroll bar here so you can zoom way in or you can zoom right back out. And you can move left and right on your editor timeline by pressing and holding the middle mouse button and dragging left and right. So you can kind of navigate around quite easily. Again, if you don't have a middle mouse button over on the left hand side in the editor panel, right now we're on the selection tool. There's also a drag tool that you can activate with H for hand or click the button. And then you can click and drag around. And then you can get back to the selection tool either by clicking the icon or by pressing V. I highly recommend get used to the keyboard shortcut in HitFilm Express or you know, if you're using any other software, it will just make your life so much easier. Cool, so now we know how to put some basic files together, but what if you wanna rearrange them? So you can obviously always move things over to the right hand side and then let's drag this clip at the end. For example, let's say I want it in between these two clips and bring that in. So now I've rearranged my clips, but you can actually do that a lot easier. You can actually select a clip to drag it, drag it to where you want to insert it and then hold down shift. And if you now let go, that essentially inserted that clip and pushed all of the other ones over to the right hand side. Let's undo that with control Z. If you didn't hold down shift and you just drag this clip over on the left hand side and let go, it's just going to replace what is right now there. So if you let go, that just replaced it. But by dragging and holding down shift, you can just insert them. It makes it really easy to just swap things out. So let's say I want this one to actually start here and maybe I want to ripple delete this gap. So I'm just going to right click the gap and select to ripple delete the gap. So I've just rearranged my shots to make them a little bit more interesting. Let's zoom in just a little bit again. And you may have noticed that when you're hovering over the edges of your clip, you get these colored braces showing. You can click and drag to adjust the end or the beginning of your clip at will to kind of trim in and out. And you see in the viewer up above, you can see the start frame right now, what that frame looks like where this clip will start. And if I drag the end, you'll see the end frame of that clip. So you can kind of adjust them really nice and easily. So you can trim the beginning or the end of any of your clips and then just ripple delete any gaps that you may be creating. But how do you cut something out of the middle? For that, in the editor timeline, underneath the selection and the drag tool, you'll find this little razor icon here. It's called the slice tool. I think it's C for cut. So you can click this icon and you're selecting this little razor here. And you can now click any way you want to essentially create a new cut, a new edit as it's called. So you can kind of chop up your clips in any way that you want. Press V again to get back to the selection tool. Let's select the clip press delete to delete that clip. And maybe I'll delete this one here as well. Again, I'm not really doing this in a terribly sensible way. I just want to show you what you can do. Talking about the why of editing is a whole nother topic just in itself. So let's drag this clip here over to the left hand side. Again, I'm holding down shift to just insert it. So I'm not overwriting what's already there. Let's ripple delete this gap and let's ripple delete this gap as well. So now I've got just a little bit of an edit going from one shot to the other. Now, in terms of the edit, it's absolutely horrible, but I really just want to get you familiar with the tools itself. Now, let's come back to the tools on the left side of the editor timeline. We've covered the selection tool, the drag tool, the slice tool. Now, there's four tools here, the slip, slide, 
Ripple Edit and Rolling Edit tools. They help you manage your edits and kind of move the cut lines around in your footage. They are a little bit advanced though, so I'm not going to cover them in this tutorial. Maybe I'll make another one on that. The one that I do find really, really useful, even for beginners though, is the Rate Stretch tool. Because whenever you have a question of how do I speed up my clip or how do I slow down my clip, that is where you use the Rate Stretch tool. And with the Rate Stretch tool selected, simply select the end of this clip and bring it in. Now, you may notice that in the viewer, I'm not being shown a different frame because I'm not actually trimming any content of this clip. I'm just speeding it up by compressing it. So the same content will play in less time. So this clip will now play back much faster. I can also go the other way. For that, I'm just going to zoom out, box select all of the clips after this one. Just pull them out to the right hand side. Just so I've got a little bit more space to play with. Let's select the clip again. Make sure you're on the rate right stretch tool. Select the end and let's drag this out. And so I'm now slowing this clip down, right? I'm making this clip longer. So the content will play back over a longer duration. That'll essentially slow it down. So let's play this back. Now it is pretty laggy because it wasn't actually a slow motion shot, but it just slowed down the clip. The Ray Stretch tool makes it really easy to speed up or slow down clips at will. If you want to be more precise, like you want to speed up a clip to twice its speed, you can simply right click on the clip come up to speed and duration and set the speed. Right now here it's this random number of 26.49. You can set this to exactly 50%, hit okay. And this will now play back with exactly half speed. So you get a bit more control that way, but most of the time the rate stretch tool will do just fine. Let's again just delete the gap so we at least have one consecutive edit without the black spots in the middle. And let's look at all of the other panels that you have on your interface. But before we do that, over in the top right hand side, you can see untitled project with a star saying we haven't actually saved our file just yet. And just in case everything crashes and dies, let's hit Ctrl or Command and S to save our project. Let's give it a file name and hit save. And now we've saved our project. Also, one really useful feature, if you come up into the main menu under File and Options, now in here there's a whole bunch of different settings for, you know, your rendering quality, your hard drive, your caching, a lot of advanced stuff I won't even touch on. What I do want to show you is autosave. So you may want to go into autosave. By default, I believe this is set to 10 minutes and bring this down to maybe two minutes or so. So if something does happen, something crashes, at least you will lose at most two minutes of your work and you'll be able to recover the previously automatically saved file. So let's hit OK. And with that, we're ready to talk about all of the other panels and all of the other cool functionality that you have available in HitFilm Express. First off, most actively, you've already seen the view on the top right hand side, which always shows you the image underneath the timeline indicator. By the way, with all of these thick lines around these panels, when you hover over them, you can see your cursor turn into these little arrows, either left, right, or up and down. You can just click and drag to rescale and resize. I'm just going to make the viewer a little bit bigger, so it's just a little bit easier to see. The viewer, obviously, will always show you what is underneath your current timeline indicator. You can also scrub through at the bottom here, and obviously it's got playback controls right there. Now, if you're new to HitFilm, things that tend to trip people up, if you scroll on your mouse wheel up or down, you can zoom in and out of your footage. And a lot of people are really zoomed in without noticing it. And they're wondering, why, is, why am I seeing this, this pixelated, ugly stuff? Like, what is this? Why is my edit not showing properly? Bottom right hand side of the viewer, you will have a zoom control. Right now, that is set to 720%, which is pretty high. So let's pop this open. You can obviously set this to anything you want, or you can just go scale to fit and bring your image right back in. The other thing that can happen as well is that while you're playing it back, it's really pixelated. But then when it pauses, it suddenly looks nice and sharp. That can come again just from your settings. Right now at the bottom here, if I pop open this drop down menu, it's set to full, meaning that when it's playing back, it's playing back at full resolution. If you have a slow computer, you may want to switch this to half or a quarter. But what happens if I set this to a quarter and play back? Can you see how jagged and pixelated everything gets? It's because during playback, HitFilm Express will only use a quarter resolution. And that will make your footage look pixelated. So bring this up to full if you want all of the detail, even while playing back. If you bring this up again, there's additional options, which, well, unfortunately, they're out of screen here, but there's options for changing your playback quality, the paused resolution, as well as the paused quality. And again, you can play with these. Just if things look really pixelated and ugly, check that these settings are actually on a good quality. Otherwise, that is the reason why your footage is all grainy and pixelated to begin with. 
Over on the left hand side, you will find a few options for the viewer. So showing motion path, which is for animating and moving things around. Show effect controls, again, more advanced background color, check a background if you have transparency. Again, not going to touch on these ones very much because they're all more advanced and this is really meant to be a beginner introduction. However, a really cool thing is you can actually just export a frame. If you're on a frame that you think looks really cool, let's say I really like this shot. I just want the image. A lot of people might do a screen grab and get that out, but you can just go into options, export frame, save your frame out as a PNG to wherever you want to, and you then have it available as an image on your hard drive to do whatever you want with. Another really useful panel, and let me make the viewer a little bit smaller again, is the meters panel over on the right hand side. This will show you the volume of your audio playing back from the clips on your editor timeline. If I come to the beginning, you can see there's a little bit of an audio waveform here on this intro shot. And if you play this back, keep your eyes on the meter. You can see this shows me the volume being played back. And the main thing you want to keep an eye out is that these bars don't jump above the zero decibel line because anything above that is actually louder than recommended or louder than normal. And if you upload it to YouTube, Facebook, anywhere, you might end up with a badly distorted signal. So personally, I always try to keep the maximum audio between minus six and zero or minus 12 and zero, somewhere in this range. You want it loud, but not so loud that it's either annoying or gets distorted. So meters are really useful. And again, they will always show the audio volume under your current cursor so you can kind of check the audio volume at different parts of your edit which again is actually really useful. Now I have not forgotten about this but let's come back to the trimmer because the trimmer actually is one of the most useful tools that you have available in HitFilm Express. If you remember the trimmer will automatically show the clip that we have selected in our media panel. So if I select this walk in intro shot here in my trimmer I can see the first frame and at the bottom I actually have playback controls. I can play this clip back it's not yet in my timeline, it's not yet part of my project, but I'm just previewing it. So it's essentially previewing the files in my media panel. I can now scrub through. And this is actually a pretty long shot. This is a 40 second shot. And chances are I really only want a very, very small section of this shot. Now, the options you have, so you can either drag and drop this entire clip onto your editor timeline. Let's just zoom out a little bit. And it's a pretty long clip. You could use the razor or the slice tool, kind of cut the pieces out that you want, delete the beginning and the end, and then kind of, yep, maybe you want this shot, although quite honestly, I really don't. And then ripple delete the gap, zoom back in, and you're, yep, cool, that's the piece I wanted. However, the trimmer allows you to select only slices of your footage from the media panel before you even bring them onto the editor timeline. Imagine you took a 30 minute clip of your brother's or your sister's wedding and all you want are those few minutes when the vows are being spoken. So you can actually look at the full 30 minutes in the trimmer itself. So let's say uh, out of this clip, it's not a wedding, but you know, it, it looks fancy either way. Let's say I really just want this last section here. So I can come to where the piece starts that I want. Bottom left of the trimmer, you can set an in and an out point. So I can now set an in point. You'll see the left side of everything up to my current marker is gray go over a little bit to the right. So maybe up until uh, before I even shake the camera up until here, I can now set an out point. And again, it's I and O for the shortcut. So let's press O to set an out point. And now I can drag from the trimmer into my timeline and I will only drag or only import this little section of this whole shot. So click in the trimmer, drag this over and bring it into the editor timeline. Let's drop this off right at the end. And here it is it's only the section of this long clip that I actually wanted. And the cool thing is I can reuse the trimmer as often as I want to. So let's say what I want is this shot here at the beginning where I'm walking into the Jackalope Hotel. So let's say this is the section I really want. So let's set an in point, move forward a little bit until I'm just through the doors to maybe here, set an out point. Let's come to the beginning of our editor timeline. By the way, middle mouse button and drag or the H for the hand tool to drag, or you can also move the progress bars at the bottom to just drag this to the left. And let's say I want this clip at the beginning. Uh, this, I want this to be my intro shot. We're kind of entering the hotel. So again, let's click and drag on the trimmer, pull this into our editor timeline on the very left side. Remember to press shift, otherwise you're literally going to override what is already there. I really want to insert it and push everything over to the right hand side. Let's let go. And that now inserted this clip at the beginning of our video. And what I might do is I might actually rate stretch this as well. It's a 10 second clip, takes a little bit too long. So let's press S for the rate stretch tool or select it from the editor toolbar on the left hand side. 
select the end of this clip and let's bring it into maybe about five seconds so it'll be around about twice as fast and then right click the gap drop the delete and let's rewind and play this back cool that's not too bad Definitely not going to win me an Academy Award, but hopefully was good enough to explain the functionality and the usefulness of the trimmer in HitFilm Express. Next, let's look at a few other panels that you will find on the default interface for HitFilm Express. Behind the media panel, in kind of the same section, you will find an effects panel. Let's click on that. And this is going to bring up all of the effects and the transitions, both for audio and for video, that are available in HitFilm. Now, as you scrub through these or use the search at the top, you'll find this add-on icon and quite a few of these effects. What this means is you can use those effects in your project and preview them, but when you're exporting your video it will leave a watermark unless you purchase the add-on itself. So obviously a bit of an upsell there, but there are lots of effects that you can use in HitFilm Express for free. They won't leave a watermark. Just note that the ones with add-on will stamp a watermark onto your final export video. The other important panel within the same space as your media and your effects is the controls panel. And this allows you to change things like the position, the scale, the blend modes and control a whole bunch of things around the clip that you have currently selected. Let me just make this panel a little bit bigger and you may notice I'm revealing a history and a text panel as well that I'll touch on a little bit later. Now in the controls panel, let me just come back. You will always see the properties for the currently selected clips right now. The controls panel shows me the properties for this clip that I have selected here, the first one. In here, under clip properties, you will find things like the blend mode and whether to enable motion blur. Again, a little bit advanced, so let's leave those. Transform is the ones that you will likely find most interesting, especially if you accidentally filmed your footage upside down and you need to flip it. The way to flip it is to essentially adjust the scale because you can make your clips bigger and smaller here. In order to flip your footage, you can simply unlink the width and the height scale and then change the height scale from 100% to minus 100%. That is essentially going to flip the footage upside down. You can also flip it horizontally if you change the width scale to minus 100. So now it's flipped both ways. Do note that within the viewer, as you have these layers selected, you actually get controls that you can click directly in the viewer. So I can click on this arrow here and essentially reposition my footage. I can also click a corner and drag to scale it in and up and I can flip it upside down. If you hold down shift, the aspect ratio will be maintained and for most of the time you do want that, otherwise you're going to squash your footage. So you can get some pretty funky effects that way as well. The little blue one here allows you to rotate your footage and you can animate all of these properties, which again, I'm going to get to in just a little bit to create all sorts of really cool effects. Once you've messed up everything with the clip still selected, you can either come into the controls panel and right click onto this transform header here and select to reset, or you can actually just right click on the clip in your editor timeline and select to reset. So this is going to reset the footage for you and you're back to where you started. Now, I myself, I'm not the biggest fan of the default workspace for HitFilm because my brain works a little bit differently. The great thing is you can fully customize this in any way that you want. You can actually left click on the header of any of these panels. Let's say I want to move this effects panel, click and start dragging. And you can now dock this panel in anywhere else that you want. Let's say I want it on the right side of the viewer. So I'm going to drag it onto this little right arrow here. Let's go. And it's going to dock this effects panel over on the right hand side. Let's say I don't care about my audio, so I can actually close my meters panel and this controls one here. Maybe I really want it floating freely, so I can right click and select to float panel. And that's going to create a floating window that I can move anywhere I want in my interface. I can move it over to my other screen, which obviously you can't see, but I can fully customize the interface for HitFilm to work with whatever task I'm currently doing. And then I can save those settings. For that, I could come into view and then select to save my workspace. And let's call this one Tobias custom workspace, hit OK. And now whenever I want to recall this particular layout, I can come into view, workspaces and select my Tobias custom workspace. HitFilm Express also includes a whole lot of really nice pre-built workspaces. And the one I'm going to switch over to for the rest of this tutorial is actually the editing workspace. So let's select that. HitFilm is going to reload our interface. And this in my mind makes much more sense for anything editing related. I've got my media top left and then effects and bottom left. I've got trimmer, viewer, my editor and the meters and any other panels I want. I can just bring them up or move them around in any way that I want. Cool. So now you know the basics of how to get footage into HitFilm, how to edit something together and how to customize your interface to best work with your brain. Let's get a little bit more funky and start looking into layering video and audio tracks. 
Right now on my edit timeline, I have two working tracks. I have a video one layer, which contains the video for all of the footage I've imported. One called audio one, which contains all of the associate audio files. And I have a default master channel, which is where all of my audio channels essentially funnel through. So this is really like the master volume for all of the audio channels combined. Now, of course, you can easily add additional video and audio tracks to your project and use them in any way that makes you happy. For that, let's right click the video one layer. By the way, you can also rename your tracks if you want to call them something more sensible than video one, or you can select to insert a new track. Now the scrolling becomes a bit weird here, but what you can do in the bottom left hand side of the editor timeline on the right side of this scaling scroll where you find this little right arrow and this took me a little while to find, you can pop this open and change the video size, the video track size from large to medium. That's going to make them a little bit smaller. Let's actually do the same for the audio as well. Let's make them medium and that's going to give you a little bit more space to work with. And there now I have a second video layer. I can also right click onto the audio layer, say insert track, and I now have a second audio track. You can actually also automatically add new video and audio tracks as you're dragging new footage in. So for example, if I take this door macro shot and drag this into my edited timeline, but I'm placing it at the very top where there isn't actually a video track just yet, you can see right now I'm placing this green one here outside of my video two layer. If I let go now, this is actually going to create a new video layer at the top, video three with my door macro footage in. And it also added a new audio layer, audio three with my door macro MP4 audio on. So you can either very explicitly create new ones or create them just by dragging media onto empty space and it will create new layers for you. Let's just right click video three, say delete this track. And yes, I'm going to delete the clip as well. So hit yes to delete that. I'm also going to delete the audio track as well. And again, yep, let's flush that. That's a little bit easier to see if we're working with two layers. And now that you have multiple audio and video tracks, you can start to layer visual elements or layer audio. Let's just do something a little bit crazy. Let's select this railing macro shot. Let's use the trimmer to kind of get rid of this little wonky bit at the beginning. I really just want this smooth movement to the left. So press I to set an in point. Let's go to the end. Let's take the full rest. Let's drag and drop this onto our video two layer. And you'll notice that the audio automatically snaps to audio two. Let's let go. And obviously in our viewer right now, railing macro sits right on top of this walking footage so you won't be able to see the video underneath it because the one on top will get rendered it's kind of a top-down rendering so you see the top layer you can actually click this little eye icon here to hide video 2 and then the one underneath this this walking footage will show through again but let's re-enable video 2 let's select the clip let's come to the controls and because we've switched to the editing workspace, the controls are now next to the media, which to me, again, maybe it's just my brain. It just makes a little bit more sense. But again, just feel free to use the other workspace if that makes more sense. Just come to the controls panel wherever you have it. Let's pop open the clip properties. And at the very top here, if I make this just a little bit bigger, I have this blend mode. Right now, this blend mode is set to normal. Actually, let me make the viewer a little bigger as well. I can change the blend mode from fully opaque, fully solid, which is why Railing 2 is covering the footage underneath it. Let's change this from normal over to, let's say, screen. Suddenly, you can see both layers together and you can create some really trippy, some really funky effects. Let's come to the beginning and play back just a little bit. You're creating this really trippy effect of having multiple video layers layered on top of each other. You can obviously change this to anything you want. Maybe I just want the hue, although that, that's looking a little bit too trippy for my liking. Let's just change this back to normal. And the other thing you can now do that you're layering things, you can create picture in picture effects and I get asked about them a lot. So I've just got two video layers on top of each other, select the top one, and then you can either come into transform and under scale, just click and drag on any of these, or you can come into the viewer, which I find much easier, select a corner of this layer, and start dragging. Don't forget to hold down shift to make sure you're scaling proportion, you're not distorting it. Yeah, maybe that. Let's drag this in the top left hand corner. And if you now go back and play this back, you've got a picture and picture effect. Now that you've got multiple video tracks layered, it also makes sense to be able to adjust the opacity. So under transform with the top clip selected, you can now adjust the opacity, the transparency to kind of fade things in and out if you wanted to. So let's just make this semi-transparent just because we can. And let's also add some music to this whole thing. Now, audio one is already taken by the footage for our base entry footage. 
audio layer 2 is taken by the audio for this rail macro but maybe I don't actually want this now I could easily add a third audio track and drop some music on there but I'm feeling like this is just this audio is just wasted so I can actually right click my clip in my editor timeline select to unlink and this will unlink my audio and my video layer because right now if you drag this clip it will move the audio and the video layer together they're kind of it's one piece right the audio and the footage belong glued together so it keeps them together but I can right click this clip and select to unlink and now I can actually move the audio and the video files separately that also means I can select the audio separately and just delete the audio. So now I've got space on my audio 2 layer for some music because I didn't really need the audio for this clip. So let's come into the media panel, come up, pop open our audio folder. And again, I've got a whole bunch of different sound effects here. Descent itself is a free audio clip I got from the YouTube audio library. There's tons of cool stuff on there you can find. So let's drag this clip. Obviously I can't drop it on a video layer because it is just audio, but I can drop it onto an audio track and let's bring this in to the very beginning. And let's just play this back. Cool, that's super easy. Now, did you know that over on my meters, I've got a little bit of a red indicator here. That means that at one point of my playback right now, the audio was too loud, it was clipping. The audio signal would end up distorted if I exported this. If I go back, it's right here. Let's zoom in a little bit and I'm actually going to make the audio tracks bigger again. So this little triangle here, audio size, let's make this larger again so I can see what's going on. And right here, the audio volume for this walk, I think it's the door closing. And you can see the audio is getting too loud just right here. Now, one thing I did not talk about, and you may have noticed this on your editor timeline, both audio and video tracks have this little white line going through them. Let's also make the video track size a little bit bigger again and just make this nice and big so you can see what's going on. So you can see these white bars here both on the video tracks and the audio tracks. On the video tracks this represents opacity or transparency. Have a look on this little picture and picture effect our railing macro shot here. If I click and drag this line down the layer becomes transparent. If I drag this up it becomes opaque. So I can control the opacity of the layer directly in my editor timeline just by dragging this up or down. If I'm making the base footage, this entry footage transparent, I'm just gonna see black because there's nothing underneath this video layer. On my audio tracks, this represents volume. So I can actually bring this down and it'll show me it's minus 25 right now. So minus 25 decibels. So I'm actually making this a whole lot softer. I may also bring down the music a little bit in general because it might be a little bit too loud. If I now rewind and play this back. Cool, that worked fine. There was no more clipping. What if I wanted this to be nice and loud and just this little section here I want soft. Obviously you could kind of, you know, cut this up and then just bring down this section but that's just really ugly and so let's undo that right away. Control or Command and Z to undo that. And you can actually on your editor timeline animate these lines both for opacity and for volume really, really easily. All you need to do is hover over the lines if you were going to drag it up and down. Hold down Control or Command and click. That's going to place a little blue diamond, which is a keyframe. Let's go over to the end and again, control and click directly on the line. You need to be right on it to create it. It's going to create another keyframe. And let's also create a keyframe right over the spike here. Control and click. And the cool thing is with these keyframes, I can now drag them down to animate the volume to start slow and then get louder and then get really loud. But what I want to do is actually want to have it nice and loud to begin with and just kind of go really soft just before this clang and just after. So I'm just essentially animating this to just go soft at the right time. The other thing I can do as well, and whoa, this is way too loud to begin with. Let's just drag this down, start out a little bit softer. It doesn't really need that loud, but let's animate the opacity of these clips. So again, let's control and click on this walk intro twice to create two keyframes and drag the first one down. So I'm fading this in. Let's do the same for this picture and picture thing. And I'm just going to fade this in a little bit later. So now what's going to happen, let me make this a little bit bigger and check this out. Now we're going to fade the shot in slowly and then the second video layer is going to come in. So we're able to really easily control both the opacity and the volume of everything that is on our editor timeline. Let's say that you've got 10 audio tracks and you've created tons and tons of keyframes on all of them and now you find that, oh, actually I want all of them to just be a little bit softer. You don't really want to have to go through all of them and adjust them. And in order to manage your audio volume a little bit easier, 
HitFilm and HitFilm Express include an audio mixer. And we can bring this up just by coming to View, Panels, and then enabling the audio mixer in case you don't have it yet. In the editing workspace that I'm in, I already have the audio mixer. By the way, well, if it indicates that it's enabled here, it should be somewhere on your interface already. You may just not be able to see it, or sometimes it may be hiding. For example, if your panels are quite collapsed, you may sometimes see this little triangle here. So it means there's more panels behind. So just make sure that you know you know where all of your panels are. Let's jump to the audio mixer. And the audio mixer will show me my audio one channel, my audio two channel, as well as the master volume. This is again, both audio one and audio two flow into the master channel. And I can now either turn my volume up or down globally for everything, or I can say maybe just this audio channel, just all of the noise from my footage here, all of the walking sounds and the door slamming. Let's just generally make this a bit softer. I can just bring down audio one. Actually, let's rename this audio one to noise and let's rename audio 2 to music and you'll see in the audio mixer especially if you have a lot of audio tracks highly recommend you rename your tracks so now you can see my noise is going to go a little bit softer and then the music can be nice and loud and if you play this back you'll actually be shown how loud things are in relation to one another. So the audio mixer is a really easy way to kind of control the overall volume of an entire track or of your entire project without having to fiddle with more keyframes. Another really cool thing, especially if you have a lot of audio and video tracks and a very long project, let me actually just collapse the audio and the video size again to medium. You can actually give all of your clips colors so you can very easily indicate what is what. Let's say, you know, I've got this macro shot here and I want all my macro shots to be, I don't know, red on my timeline. I can either select the clip right click, come up to label, and let's just mark this with tomato. Or I can simply select the clip and on my keyboard, press one or two or three or four. I can easily color everything in and just it just helps you visually separate different types of shots or maybe something still needs a bit of work or something needs some more effects or some more audio. So you can very easily highlight stuff on your timeline and just manage it a bit more easily. Now we have already kind of talked about starting to create some animated transitions by using keyframes for opacity for your layers, for example. But HitFilm and HitFilm Express actually contain a lot of pre-built video and audio transitions that you can apply to really spice up your project. All of these can be found in your effects panel. If you come down, there are transitions for audio and for video. Let's bring up the video transitions first. Let's bring up the dissolve, for example. And again, some of them will require add-on packs, but a lot of them are available absolutely free. Obviously transitions are being applied when something transitions from one clip to another. So for example, between this and this shot, and what I might do, I might actually trim this in just a little bit and ripple delete that gap just so it goes from this moving shot into that moving shot. Just looks a little bit nicer, I think. Let's grab one of the transitions under transitions, video, dissolve, additive, dissolve. Let's just grab this effect and drag it into our editor timeline and you need to drop it on a cut line, obviously, because it's a transition and it needs to be a video cut line because it's a video transition. Let's let this go. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool, and there you have it. You've got a really nice additive transition. You can adjust the length of your transition by simply clicking and dragging on one of the corners to adjust how long these transitions work. And in the view on the top right hand side, you'll see the first frame of the previous clip where the transition will start, as well as the last frame on the consecutive clip that this transition will impact. So let's let go and rewind and play this back. Cool, that is pretty nice and trippy. Let's just maybe add a nice transition out for this little picture and picture effect. Maybe I'll go with a motion effect, maybe push. Let's grab this push transition on the end of this clip right here. Maybe just I want to push out to the left so it should swipe out to the left side. Yep, that looks nice. Let's rewind and play this back. Cool, that's looking nice. Let's come over into the audio transitions and you'll only find a crossfade and a fade, but again, really easy to drag and drop them onto your audio clips. So this will fade from one clip to the other. If you ever have like weird clicky sounds or other just ugliness between different audio files because you've glued them together and they're following one another, just drop a crossfade on it and it'll just blend them together a whole lot nicer. And again, it'll just give your video a much more professional feel. 
Besides transitions, HitFilm and HitFilm Express also include a whole bunch of different audio and video effects. Under the audio effects, you'll find things like reverbs and echoes and distortions and all sorts of other cool things that you can play with. Under the video effects, you'll find distortions, generations, particle effects, light flares, a whole bunch of cool stuff. And the way to apply any of these effects, I'm not gonna go through all of them, simply select one, let's go maybe a color gradient, drag and drop it directly on your video clip. Then in the controls panel, you know how we can control the clip properties as well as the transform settings for the clip. Once you have effects applied, you'll find them under the effects tab and you can expand them in here. Maybe I'll let me just collapse this just so we can see it a little bit easier. So I've got this color gradient here, for example. It's got a start and an end color. And I can simply use these color pickers to maybe I'll go from like a blue to maybe like a nice, very orangey, yellowish color. I can control the opacity from here. Maybe let's just tweak some of these settings. So now I've got a stylish video effect applied. You can enable and disable any effects that you've applied to your video layers just by enabling this checkbox here. So that's without the effect. That is with the effect. Obviously not saying that this is the best effect to use for this shot. And there's tons of other ones. Just, just try them out. Apply them to your clips, to your audio files. Just play around. There's a whole bunch of cool stuff that you can do. Now before we move on, I do want to show you that you can add keyframes and therefore animate almost anything in HitFilm Express. Remember how we animated the opacity of our video layers or the volume for the audio layers? Now anywhere in HitFilm Express where you see these round circles next to a property, like anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity, or if you pop open any of these effects, a lot of these properties have this little circle here and this means that you can animate those properties. Let's come to this shot here, for example, where we applied this color gradient. And let's say I want to animate the opacity. Let's say I want to fade this effect in slowly. What I can do is come to the position where I want the effect to start. Let's reduce this to zero and then click on this circle here next to the opacity or any other property that you want to animate. And that is going to turn the circle blue and put a dot there. Meaning right now at this position in our timeline, there's a keyframe on this property and the blue circle just means it's animated or it is keyframe to begin with. If I move this cursor off, you'll see that the circle remains blue, but the dot in the middle is gone because right now at this frame, there is no keyframe, but the property is still animated. So let's go forward a little bit and let's bring the opacity up to 100%. And now if you scrub through, you can see we've animated the opacity of this effect to come in. And you can do this with any other property or any other effect in HitFilm Express. And it gives you a huge amount of power, which is why I really just couldn't leave it out of this tutorial. Now, if you say, hmm, I can't see the keyframes though, which makes it a bit hard to manage, you can actually. Under the controls panel over on the right hand side, you'll find this little window icon and it says display timeline. If you pop this open and let's make this a little bit bigger and again, control and mouse wheel in to zoom in. You can see here are my keyframes for this opacity property and I can set new keyframes if I wanted to. For example, let's say at this point, I want this to be 100%, then it goes back down to zero. So we're kind of getting this, there's like a flicker here and then it slowly fades in. And again, I can add keyframes and manage keyframes for any property. I can even change color. Let's say the end color actually starts out being a little bit pinkish. Whoa, that looks trippy. And then at the end, it goes yellow. So now I've animated both the color of this effect. So the first flash is kind of pink and then it goes yellow. In order to disable keyframes again, simply left click again on one of these blue circles that you've already animated and it'll immediately say, okay, this is no longer an animated property. All of the keyframes are removed and you're back to where you started. This capability though, to be able to add keyframes and animate any property or any effect that you add to your video or audio layers unlocks a humongous amount of possibilities to do absolutely anything you can imagine directly in HitFilm Express, which to remind you is a free program. And one more cool thing I want to actually show you before we get to the exporting part is adding and working with text. For that, it should come as no surprise that we are going to use the text panel. Let me make a little bit more space. I'm going to close my audio mixer as well as my trimmer because I don't need it. Bring this over to the left hand side, collapse my timeline. Again, you could just reset your workspace if you wanted to. I just want to make the viewer a little bit bigger for you so you can see this a little bit more easily. And in order to add text to your project, Within the viewer, you actually have a text tool. So simply select the text tool, click anywhere into your viewer and just type some text. Go back to the selection tool and you'll be able to place your text anywhere you want. Let's say we'll place it right there. 
And down here in the editor timeline, you may notice that it's actually created a new layer, a new visual layer, because, well, technically it's like a video layer on top that has this text. So I can again just adjust the length of this text. So this text will now be visible throughout this entire weird intro flickery shot. And again, because it is a visual layer, I can now animate the opacity. So again, I could fade this in just by control clicking on this opacity line here, just creating some keyframes to essentially now fade this in and fade this out. The other thing I could do as well, let's undo those keyframes, go back to that. Let's just have it swipe in from the left hand side. And for that, again, I could come into the effects. Remember, there was a video transition called push. And because the text is just a video layer, I can essentially apply a push transition to the beginning. So there the text comes pushing in, which looks pretty cool. Or if you wanted to do this more custom with the text layer selected in the controls under transform, you can keyframe these properties. So I can set a keyframe right here. Let's say I want to keyframe the position. Let's go forward a little bit. And let's just move the text over to the right hand side. Again, this is going to set another keyframe. And now at the end, I've got the text zooming off to the right. Now, if you have a very keen eye, let's zoom in on the viewer, right click and hold for the hand tool or switch to the hand tool up there. It's just a nice temporary way of doing that. If you have a really sharp eye, you may notice that the push effect had really nice motion blur. However, when we manually animated the position, we did not. And that is because under the clip properties with the text layer selected again, motion blur here was disabled. So enable that. And hmm, I'm not sure why it's not showing. I'm either missing a setting or there might be a bug in HitFilm Express. I would have expected that to show. And yes, my playback quality is too full. But again, like just use a push effect if you really want this nice motion blur or you may need to move it into a composite shot, which I haven't even touched on yet. But let's zoom back out to scale to fit. And let's talk about how you can actually export your video project to be able to share it with your friends, your family or upload it to the internet. So you finished your masterpiece and you now want to export it into a video file. First off, let's zoom out a little bit. Let me actually trim down this end of this audio because I don't actually need it. Zoom back in. And now over in the top right hand corner of the edit timeline, you will find an export button. Let's press it. And it will ask you whether to export the in out areas or the contents. The in out area in my edit timeline is everything that is marked blue here. So if I zoom all the way back out, you can see that everything here up to well three minutes and 40 long is still part of this clip. If I select to export in out area, everything that is blue will be exported, including all of this black at the end of the video. And this is why a lot of people end up with black at the end of the video. Now, what I want to do is I actually want to right click this blue bar here and select to set to contents. Can you see how the blue bar now snapped to the actual contents, the actual content where there is actually some visual material? So now it will only export up to here and then finish. You can also actually select and drag these end markers as well as the start marker around to essentially determine which part is the in out area. If I now go export in out area, again, everything under this blue from here to here will be exported. If I select to export the contents, only this part here up until the end here will be exported. I recommend keeping the two in sync though. So let's right click this area again and select to set to content. So we're just going to export the actual video part of this video. Let's select export and select in out area. Now HitFilm uses an export queue and you may actually have many things in that queue that you want to export consecutively. So I can now essentially say I want to continue working without actually going to export right now. Or I can go directly to export because I want to show you how export works. Obviously, we are going to go to export and that is going to show you the export queue. By the way, if you're now wondering, well, how do I get back to my editor or maybe I want to get back to the project settings or the startup screen, you can actually come under view. You can go back to home, which is your startup screen. View edit takes you to your editor timeline and view export takes you to the export queue. So you can swap between them easily. At the top, you'll find all of the items that you can export and you can actually export them directly from here as well. So you don't actually have to add them through the editor timeline. You can literally just jump in here and say, I want to export in out areas. The actual queue of what will be exported is at the bottom. So here's a queue of all of the items that will be exported as well as the format and the preset that is going to be applied. You can have a look at your duration to make sure that is what you're expecting. And yes, my clip was 44 seconds long and your output. You can just click on this name here. That brings up the file dialog. You can give your file a useful name. 
hit save. And then at the bottom, you can simply select to start exporting. HitFilm Express will now export this video and over on the right hand side, you'll actually get a live preview of what is being exported. So you can double check that it is really what you're expecting. Now I'm going to speed this up because I don't want you to get bored. And once you're done, on your hard drive, you should find your exported video. And this is now something that you can upload or share with your friends and family. Let's close this out and return to HitFilm Express. And let's, from the export queue, select the item that we want to export, which is our editor timeline. Select export in and out and it's going to drop a new item into our queue and what if you want to customize this export preset you can simply use this drop down here to say i want to export this as a png sequence or vimeo or for apple iphone or 720p for facebook but you can also come over to the right hand side and actually create a brand new preset now all of these presets you should either be able to select from this drop down here you can also grab them and just drop them onto the item in the queue to apply them but let's create a brand new preset. So let's simply select new preset and you can select a preset for an MP4 file, a QuickTime, MOV, an AVI, which they do tend to be very big. So unless you really want it uncompressed and there's a huge file with full quality, I would recommend go with an MP4 or even an MOV. Let's just go with MP4. Let's give this preset a useful name. And then you can set up all sorts of technical things around the quality of the video that you want. Target bitrate and max bitrate are probably the two properties that will most influence the quality of your video. If you end up with really weird artifacts, pixelated, low quality video, jack these up a little bit. Sometimes I usually for my YouTube videos, I usually set them to around 30 megabits per second, sometimes 50, but 50 again, the higher your quality is, the bigger those files are going to be. So you may have to play around a little bit with quality versus file size. Also then, you know, enable to export audio if you want to. If this is disabled, your final video file will be mute. Hit OK. You now have this new user preset here and you can simply drag and drop it onto the item in your queue. Then give your file a useful name and export that video. And that is all you need to know to be able to create your own video project from start to finish for free using HitFilm Express. Now I know that I have totally skipped talking about composite shots, which are all about creating advanced motion graphics and visual effects. But because it's an advanced topic, I might save it for another tutorial. In this video, I really just wanted to focus on all of the awesome stuff that you can already do directly in your editor timeline to create some really exciting video projects. Also, if you do enjoy my videos and want to see more, go and check out my official training courses on Udemy. I am currently working on a brand new complete training course for HitFilm Express that will go in much more detail, probably be about five to 10 hours long, and I'm hoping to get it completed within the next couple of months. So by the time you watch this video, it might actually already be available, and I am going to drop some links to all of my training courses down in the video description, so just go and check that out. But do let me know if you like this video, let me know if you made it to the end. If you made it here, I'm always really keen to see who actually watches these humongously long videos all the way to the end. Either way, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something useful out of it and I will see you in the next one. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button and don't forget to click the little bell if you actually want to get notified. If you do want to support me and what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.